Welcome to Real Time, Florida Sportsman. This week, we're going kite fishing. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan Florida Sportsman's regional forms for the best fishing reports, then travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together, we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh, yeah! <laughs> She's done for now. This week, we head down to the southeast section of the Florida Sportsman Forum. We meet up with Nick Cardella, who shows us the ins and outs of kite fishing. There he is! Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah! Nick puts us on a crazy pelagic bite and proves you don't need a big boat to fly two kites and get on some sick offshore action. All coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. Rather than telling you about Boca this week, I thought we'd show you. My buddy Ip from Boca Raton Helicopters is going to show me the lay of the land. So I'm super excited to get up in this helicopter and be able to visualize where I'm going to be fishing the following day. You know, once we're up in the air, I can see these reef lines, and I know that this is the preferred technique from Jupiter down to Miami. These guys in the southeast section, this is what they do. They live bait, they fly kites, and they fish these reef lines, and I can perfectly visualize it from the sky exactly what they're doing. Another thing I notice is they are right off the beach. Different from where I'm at, a little further north up the coast, we have to go six, eight miles offshore. These guys are a stone's throw, maybe a mile off the beach. Oh, this is sick. Now you always want the best, uh, best view in your boat. It doesn't get any better than a helicopter ride. After that sick helicopter ride, we finished our journey south launched the boat, and tied it up at the Sands Harbor Hotel and Marina in preparations of meeting Nick C. the next morning. First thing in the morning, I meet up with Nick, and the first thing I realize is this kid comes prepared. I mean, he has a truck full of stuff. How are we going to fit this all in the Triton? I have no idea. I mean, he's even got a helium tank in case the wind isn't blowing so we can fly a balloon, keep the kites afloat. I think we got enough, man. <laughs> if we can't, oh, here, you want me to take that thing? We'll scare him into the boat. Hey, if we can't catch him what we got here, we can't catch him. All right, so basically what we're doing today for your typical kite outfit here, got a uh, Penn International 12, uh, 20 pound outfit. Start out with a double line come down to a solid eye ring, your typical pink or whatever color you so choose, kite float, then a snap swivel. At the end of the snap swivel will take a 12 to 15 foot piece of monofilament or fluorocarbon leader. And then from there you go to a hook, whether you fish uh, wire leaders or straight, uh, straight mono, depending on what you're going for, and that's your basic kite outfit. After loading every compartment in that Triton, we rigged up all the rods and made our way towards the inlet. Before heading out the inlet, we had to make one stop, a bait stop. Nick had some bait penned up for us, and I'll tell you what, this kid made a three-hour trip down to Miami the day before to get live bait. You know, this is what makes the difference a lot of times between good fishermen and great fishermen. He put the time in the day before. He was concerned that maybe that morning bait wouldn't be plentiful and be hard to find, so he prepared. He had a live well filled, we we're ready to go, first light. What we like to do is just go like a couple at a time with these things so you don't take the scales off. That's it, candy right there. All right, our initial plan was to go out of Boca Inlet. We ended up staying a little further south. The bait was kept a little further south, so we're actually going to go out of Hillsborough Inlet this morning. This is Hillsborough? Uh, yeah, we'll probably probably run the beach north a little bit. We'll, uh, we'll start off like Boca Inlet there and uh, just kind of float with, the, uh, float with the wind and tide and just keep working our way north until we find a group of fish. We're sitting in 170 feet of water. We're a couple miles off the beach. It's so nice down here, you don't have to run far. And we found a nice little rip here. A couple boats are set up. Nick's getting everything ready. Let's see if we can find them. So we're flying two kites. What we'll do is we'll put a weight on each side of the kite. You know, on your left kite, you'll put one on your left side. And on your right kite, you'll put one on your right side. I use these small quarter ounce rubber core leads. 
and uh, I just put them right on the bridle, twist them twice on the top, twice on the bottom. And that'll allow your kite to sit off to the side. You know, understanding this kite setup can be a little tricky if you haven't done it before, but really if you break it down to its simplest forms, it's, pr it's pretty easy. It's, it's really simple. I have a basic pen senator with some spider wire, 60 pound spider wire, a small kite rod, pen kite rod, um, and two release clips. You don't even need to fly two. Uh, this day we're flying two. And just know that each one of these has different size holes. First one slides down, a different size swivel is on your line, catches the second one, and it spreads them out about 75 feet apart. And basically all you do is you have this eye that pops into your release clip, it's adjustable, and your bait's dangling down. Once you let your kite line up, it grabs this first clip, sends it up, you let line out, and if you can just picture it, the bait's just dangling there. Bite comes along, boom, start reeling. This segment is brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. If you spend a lot of time on the water fishing, your rod is your ultimate tool. Penn's Blue Water Carnage and Legion Inshore Rods are designed and balanced for optimum performance when paired with a Penn reel. These rods feature a composite graphite blank that includes a carbon shield built into the blank and guide wraps for enhanced performance. Carnage rods feature EVA torque grips that are contoured to fit the hand perfectly and prevent the rod from twisting while under a heavy load. Penn Legion Inshore Rods have grade A cork handles on lighter action rods and the heavy action rods have sculpted EVA handles. Both series feature Fuji stainless steel frame guides. If you seek a high performance, durable, affordable rod, Penn Carnage and Legion Inshore series should be your choice. Typically when you think of kite fish, you see these big sport fishers, you know, we're on a bay boat, you know, this 24 Triton is actually kind of perfect, Nick, isn't it? I mean, the way yeah, we're set this up. Is, this is ideal, man. We're, we're set up as good as anyone. So we're just sitting here on a dead boat. We got the motor shut off and I actually have a trolling motor in the water and just holding us in a, a you know, a, a heading on it with the eye pilot and he's just keeping the nose into the wind and he's actually flying the kite perfectly. I mean, we couldn't get a better drift. If we were in a big boat, we'd have to constantly sit there and adjust. Yep, yep, and we'd have the motors running. Yeah, this is a nice stealthy approach here. I like this. So we're just flying two kites, two rods, two baits off of each kite. Got some gogs, some greenies out. And all you want to do is just, right, Nick, just keep your bait right on the surface, close yes, to the sir. surface. So we got those pink kite indicators there, so you can keep an eye on how, how deep your bait is, you know. Ideally, you know, what I say is as long as your bait's not in the air and as long as your cork isn't in the water, you're fishing effectively. So we get both kites out, all set up. Let me tell you, it didn't take long and my short bait gets eaten. Now angle away, the other way, away from the fish. There he is! There he is jumping right here, Woohoo! Oh, that bait wasn't but 30 foot from the boat there either. You gave us a show. Yes. How about we let him go? Let's get another get one. Awesome! Right. That's what we needed. Fresh is on. That's it. The first one's the hardest. I'm still excited from that sailfish bite, but you know, Nick hasn't stopped fishing. He's still got three baits in the water, and the next thing I know, we got another fish on. <laughs> All right, we weren't even set back up after that sail release. Had a king come sky rocket on this other kite bait. 
I just saw that sail come up and eat, and I just saw this king come out of the water and take the bait. I mean, it's as exciting as it gets. There we go. Good job, babe. <laughs> just had a little flurry of action. And we're gonna reset, get a couple more baits out, just bump back out. It's so nice, it just drops off so quick here. Just the bump of the motor, we're just barely bumping forward, able to still fly the kites and just bump these baits back out to the right zone. We had that bite in 100 feet of water, saw a lot of bait, so we're not gonna go far. Just get back in that zone, set back up. This segment is brought to you by Triton Boats by Earl Bentz. We take America fishing. Fishing means long runs over open, often rough water. Quietly approaching monster fish in the shallows. Trolling the depths with a frisky live bait for a trophy of a lifetime. The Triton LTS is a bay boat with a big water attitude. It's built to handle every facet of fishing, including the catching part. No other boat fishes, performs, and fuels your angling passion like a genuine Triton LTS. Fish hard, fish fast, fish far aboard a Triton LTS. See us today at your local Triton dealer or visit us at tritonboats.com. You know, just like with any other type of fishing, it's about developing a pattern, knowing what's working that day. We found the depth of water that we know they're at. We're going to keep the boat fishing in that same area. And a lot of people, like when we're kite fishing, like to keep their bait up on top splashing. I like to keep it just under the water. When your bait's up there splashing on top, you waste a lot of energy and they'll, they'll die out quicker. So they get, they, get, they get stressed out. So I like to keep them just below the low to surface and that bait's still putting out a lot of vibrations that that fish are keying in on. It doesn't necessarily have to be throwing water around. It's like perfect conditions out here man. Just enough wind to keep the kites going. Good looking water, smoking north tide. You know we started down there off like Hillsboro uh, and now we're off uh, Deerfield Pier almost to Boke Inlet there. And uh, I mean this is just perfect. Not too rough, not too calm. About as good as it gets right here. There he is. <laughs> All right. Good job. Another nice king for the smoker. Woo! Close up. Sweet. Good <laughs> going, George. Good job. We'll take him. Not a sail, but it's action. Probably one of the most surprising things that I learned from Nick that day was his terminal setup. You know, his use of J hooks versus circle and his use of wire tracer leader versus straight fluorocarbon. I've always been the type that thought you just had to use fluorocarbon leader when you're fishing for pelagics. Boy, did he prove that wrong. You know, he said to me, unless he's exclusively fishing for sales in a tournament, he's fishing a J-hook and he's fishing a wire leader, a number five or number six wire, in case that kingfish or wahoo bite comes along. You'd rather catch a king and then, uh, right, then have, you know, off. just get cut off. I, I love this kind of fishing. It's so, so much fun, God. Something's going on here long. Pick up your long, pick up your long. I hit him a little, little mahi. We got the sail, we got the king, it's dinner and a show. Now I got a mahi. Ha ha ha, little dolphin. Nice little fish. Beautiful fish there. Perfect eating size too. God. It's about time a guest host put me on the good side of the boat. You know, the last <laughs> two episodes have been poached to the bad side and all the spots have been poached from me. There we go. That was a weird bite up on top. Kept missing it. Actually, it might be a zero. Zero mackerel, yeah. We call that poor man's lobster. Not a bad little box for a morning of fishing so far. We're just getting started. Once again, the north side of the boat's producing. When Nick C. put me on the north side of the boat, he didn't do it as superstition. This kid has it dialed in. He knows exactly how these fish are pushing down current. He says that they swim with their noses into the current. The north side of the boat typically gets eaten before anything else. Oh, nice what a bite. bite. He's got you there. It's like we're connected there. <laughs> if you could put an order in for a little blackfin, 
I'll, I'll do my best. Yeah, do that for me. Dude, he's working. Here. Yeah, man. I tell you, that drag on that new Pen 12 is sweet. Dude, he's stretching me out. Just a heavy fish, dude. It's a weird, weird fight. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's a bonita. This fish does not want to come to this boat. No, man. You got some heat on him too now, man. He's taking right now good too, huh? All right, I've been on this fish 10, 15 minutes now. You know, the cameraman, Nick, they're taking wagers. They think I have a bonita foul hook, but something inside me knew that this was a quality fish. Might as you get a guess, it's something with fins that swims. The next thing you know while I'm fighting my fish, I look down and there is blue, green, yellow darting everywhere. We're surrounded by dolphin. Nick grabs a pitch bait. Next thing you know, he's hooked up and he's bailing them in the boat, one after the other. He's not even throwing them in the cooler. He's throwing them on the deck of the boat while I'm tied up with this submarine on the bow. This is crazy. I finally get to catch something. Yeah, hey, well, I was busy. Do a little charity work. Nice little school of dolphin. There's a few of them there. Not monsters by any means, but. God knows what's going on in the back of the boat with the rest of the base. The kite's down. I'll bump it forward a little bit more. Here comes my fish, dude. What does it look like? What's it look like? Big it's wahoo? A, it's a wahoo. It's a Big wahoo. wahoo. Big wahoo. Oh, oh my God, George. God. Woo -hoo. Yeah, buddy. Give Good me some work, of man. that. I'm going to lift him right in the boat here. Woo -hoo, man. Are you kidding me? Sail, dolphin. Man. man, that's a beautiful fish, man. That's what I was thinking. Maybe it was. Is that insane? Thank God Nick decided to use those wire tracer leaders. I never would have caught that fish if it wasn't for the wire. You know, and as you can tell, I have not caught a lot of wahoo in my life. I was super excited to catch this one. You know what? We, we ordered this Yeti thinking we'd be doing a lot of inshore. I need a bigger Yeti. I think so. We've drifted north of Boca Inlet at this point, and we haven't even got this spread out, and I got another mahi on. I mean, we I can't even him, get this. I got him, I got him. You gotta give me a break, George. Poor Nick. I can't even get this. Can't even get this spread out. Look at them all lit up. You cannot duplicate those colors. Look how vibrant he is. Wow. Come here, you. Ooh. This segment is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Wildly stronger keeps ice longer. I'm on the water more days than not. A cooler is just as important to me as any other piece of equipment on the boat. In Florida's harsh environment, I need a cooler that's built to last. Yeti coolers are rotationally molded, which makes them virtually indestructible. T-Rex lid latches are the same latches used on ATVs. One-piece seamless construction provides long-lasting durability. Yetis feature never-fail hinge systems, double-haul handles, and vortex drain systems. Thicker cooler walls mean more cold-containing insulation. Yeti lids have three inches of insulation because that's where it's needed most. And Yeti coolers don't just close, they seal. Yeti coolers are built to take the rugged abuse from the way we work and play. Unlike ordinary coolers, which are typically disposable, the Yeti is built to last. Yeti, wildly stronger, keeps ice longer. All right, to this point is probably one of the best days as far as quantity and quality that I've had offshore for this Pelagian fight. I'm thinking to myself, it can't get any better than this. Oh, oh, there's sail. Sail. Oh. sail on the short. We're all wrapped up. Oh, no, no, you're good, you're good. Nick's bit, got a sail coming up on a bait. Got him, Nick? Yeah. I got something on too here. I got a sail on over here, Nick. Yep, yep, yep. Double headers on, here it comes. There he is. Nice action. Hell yeah. What a jump, baby. Crazy, crazy bite today. We need one more hand. I kind of like driving and fishing. Yours went one way, mine went the other. You know, kite fishing seems so difficult to people. I just think they just don't go out and do it. You know, if you get the right stuff to do it, a little practice. Yep, the right tools and, and practice. You know, that's all it is. It's, <laughs> it's the same thing every time. Come out here and do it a few times and 
It's not that difficult once you, it's get, really especially once you get set up like yeah, this. It's, I mean, it's just the two of us out here. We got two kites and it's you yeah, know, you really no, fly. no I mean, big deal at all. We went over the top with two kites and you can easily just fly one kite and some flat lines. Yep, off, yep. Out the you don't the have kite. to do two. You know, I first started kite fishing, I started with one kite and one bait off that one yep. kite. And then as we got comfortable, we just progressed and now we're doing this. Nick is a kid that I followed on the forum for years. You know, even as a grommet, a young teenager, he used to actually give seminars at the Florida Sportsman Shows. You ask anybody in South Florida from big boat tournaments, all the sail tournaments, and they will tell you that this kid is worth his weight in gold in the back of a boat. Oh my God. Nick's bringing the kites in so we can chase after these guys. Tripled up. No. <laughs> I'll just sit here and wait. The cooler's full of dolphin, wahoo, and king. We got two sails on. He's got something else on. Another king. Another king. Oh God. Yeah, just throw him on the deck. Don't worry. Yeah. Just a king. Ready Get him on the deck team. there. Worry about him a little bit. Yeah, flip -flop. All right. Let me get my blue one back here. All right. There he is. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Show us. That's it, Nick. That's it. That's it. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Good release. All right, get yours. All right. What a day. I'll tell you, I'm mainly a snook guy, right? Say no snook. Oh, Nick! Caught him. <laughs> Nick C in the southeast section of the Florida Sportsman Forum. Hooks out. We have crushed him today. We have caught sail, kingfish, dolphin, an awesome wahoo. What a great day, man. I appreciate everything. Hey, George, it was fun, man. Man, you are on him. Woo! Man. And away she goes. What a day. That was awesome, man. It doesn't get any better now, does it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great job. Not bad for a half day of fishing. The wintertime months in the southeast section of Florida are probably second to none for pelagic bite. The weather window can be short in between cold fronts, but the days that the weather's great, you need to go. Like I said, I've been following Nick C's reports on the Florida Sportsman Forum for years. When the opportunity arose to fish with him, I jumped at it, and what a great day it was. Keep your reports coming, and I may fish with you next on Real Time Florida Sportsman. The secret to real-time success is Twizzlers. Every trip they've been with us. Just why don't we do this? Why don't we just get a quick quad on? Yeah, just pandemonium. And then a gaffer dolphin, and we'll call it. And we'll hit that bar at the sands. Yeah. Oh, and tip wrap. Oh. 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 Got her short. Got her short. Got bit. I think I broke off here. Did you get that? I'm on the water over 250 days a year, and my eyes are important to me. Maui Jim has always been my sunglass of choice. All Maui Jim sunglasses featured patent polarized plus two technology with color enhancers. Really, what that means is it allows the good visible light in while blocking out the glare. Maui Jim offers four different colors of polarized plus two lenses. My personal favorite is the HCL Bronze and the new Maui HT. The new Maui HT lens is an awesome color for the water. It allows the most amount of contrast between the water and the fish. Maui Jim has multiple lens colors and styles to suit your fishing needs. 
Go try them on at any West Marine or your local tackle store.